The Xbox ROG Ally and Xbox ROG Ally X are almost here. However, a number of people are thinking they're gonna hold off because of the price tag. Meaning there will be a lot of handheld gamers that'll still be rocking their original ROG Allies for a while more, especially given that you can find them pretty easily on Marketplace for about 250 USD used, which is crazy given that's like a third of its original launch price or something. But what if there was a way we could turn these three-year-old Windows handhelds into Xbox ROG Allies of their own for relatively little cost. We're talking a better battery, better Windows experience, and better ergonomics, so let's do this thing. So step one of our Xbox Ally conversion is the Windows experience. As many of you may know, the collaboration between Xbox and Asus to release the Xbox ROG Ally, combined with the recent discoveries at how good SteamOS is at handheld gaming and in some ways better than Windows. Thanks Dave2D for the awesome video by the way, shout out to Ontario based YouTubers. That's finally lit a fire under the Windows team to actually make the Windows handheld gaming experience feel like a handheld gaming experience and that has finally come in the form of the Xbox full screen experience. Actually, I think it's just called full screen gaming experience or something, but the only option in there is the Xbox launcher right now. So it's basically the Xbox full screen experience. Now they're still cooking on that feature at the time of this writing. However, if you want to try it out today, you can definitely do that with the following little tricks. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB prototyping, assembly, 3D printing, and even full-on CNC machining. Really almost anything to do with making your cool electronics project happen. I never thought it would be accessible for me to design my own circuit board and then actually have it printed and held in my hands instead of having to breadboard everything, but now my mind is racing with ideas because I can do exactly that, which is crazy. Boy, would seven-year-old Coulter lose his mind about this. And right now, they're running a promotion where you get free purple solder mask at no extra cost and up to 40% off TPU filament, so definitely check out PCB Way in the link in the description, and thank you so much PCB Way for sponsoring this video. First, you'll need the Windows 11 25H2 build, which if it hasn't already been officially released at the time you're watching this video, there are a number of ways you can jump the update queue. I personally use the Windows Insider program option. However, because 25H2 is so close to release, people now recommend that you go through other options such as just using regular Windows update, maybe checking that little like, get me newer updates sooner please button, or there's like an official enablement package you can use that'll like bump you up in Windows update faster. And some people just install a fresh copy of Windows 11 that'll get them straight into that latest 25H2 build. I'll leave a link in the description below to an article that documents all those options and it also seems to be keeping itself up to date with what the best recommended option is. But regardless of the option you choose, once you have 25H2, you should, asterisk should, just be able to go into settings, gaming, and then see the full screen experience option there. If you see that, congrats, you have full screen experience now. But if like me, you still don't see the full screen experience option show up, then there's a little hack you do with a tool called Vive Tool and a little registry change. And the process for doing that is also in the link in the description. And that did finally get full screen experience to show up for me. However, if you're not comfy with command line or registry editor, then I definitely just maybe wait until it organically shows up in your settings and again maybe spam windows update a little more or reboot a couple more times but if you're no stranger to the terminal then it worked pretty fast and easy and after a reboot i finally had the settings show up so yay full screen experience and once you finally get that setting to show up you just tap into it and you just check your default launcher which so far the only option is xbox maybe other ones will be available later like you could boot straight into steam but obviously right now xbox is the main one they've been working on and once you turn on full screen experience, your ally may boot into full screen experience right away, which just means that when you go to like swipe up from the bottom, you'll see a much more simplified kind of alt tab menu, which is like your entire navigation and you won't see the start menu anymore. And if you don't see full screen experience right away, you can reboot and then it'll boot into full screen experience by default, which is super cool. And then from that kind of swipe up alt tab menu, you can optionally choose to show the broader Windows experience if you want. But for most of us, if the game we want to play is already installed, we just want to boot into a launcher and open that game, which is exactly what full screen experience does and I've been very pleased with it so far. Once you're in the Xbox app and full screen experience, if you don't see the option to show like games from your Steam library or Epic or other libraries you have, you might have an older version of the Xbox app, in which case you'll want to go to the uh, Windows Store or whatever it's called, Microsoft Store or something, and just make sure you have the latest version of the Xbox app itself. And that should give you the option to see your Steam games and everything from the Xbox menu, which is really cool. I'm actually on a preview build because I wanted to check out this feature like a month or two ago, but I'm pretty sure that's now mainstream. So if not, 
and you play with the preview builds. On the topic of software, one thing you'll probably want to do as well is to map an Xbox button hotkey on your allies, since obviously the new Xbox ROG allies are going to have that Xbox button, but we don't have a physical Xbox button on these allies. And so I just went to Armory Crate and mapped my back paddle and ROG button to an Xbox button, which works super fine. The only catch is that if you've used Armory Crate before to map things, and if you have custom mappings for different apps and games, you will have to add that Xbox button mapping to each of the mappings. So just when you're in a different game or in a different app, you just open Armory Crate from there, update your mapping, and then you've got an Xbox button. I think by default, back paddle and ROG button is like voice dictation, which is kind of useless. So would definitely recommend remapping that. And then you can make the pretty little game bar show up, which I've never really used the game bar, but now the game bar looks actually useful, especially when they eventually get the Armory Crate quick settings to roll up into the game bar. We'll I have this nice little sleek settings menu you can tab through. Very Xboxy, got some communication features, some volume leveling features. I like it a lot. I think the Windows team is on a really good track here and it's feeling very Steam OS-y, which is wonderful, while still having Windows underneath to actually play our entire libraries. So kudos Windows team, thank you for working on this and uh, I'm excited to see the full version soon. As far as resource saving, reports have shown that the Xbox full screen experience does actually shave a whole two gigs off of what your ally needs to consume to run Windows, which is awesome if the game you're running has high memory needs or high VRAM needs. But for most games, the performance test I've seen means it probably won't affect your frame rate too much. However, one little bonus win is I seem to be getting about 10 or so minutes more of battery life since switching over to Xbox full screen mode. I've been playing through Arkham Knight trying to finally finish it up. And before I was only getting a solid hour from 100% down to basically zero running on performance mode. And now in those same settings, I get like an hour 10 or so. So that's cool, which is really funny because technically that's like a 17% increase in battery life, but by no means am I gonna run around claiming that the Xbox full screen mode gives you 17% more battery. So your results can and likely will vary, but uh, something cool to keep an eye on at least. And speaking of battery life, step two of our Xboxification of our ally project is indeed a battery upgrade. As many of us know, one of the biggest issues with the original ROG ally was how hilariously fast it took to go from 100% battery down to zero. And like I mentioned, I only get one hour performance mode on this guy. So I leave him attached to an external battery a lot. <laughs> and that's of course why the following year, Asus came out with the ROG Ally X, going from a 40 watt hour battery to an 80 watt hour battery, just to kind of stop the bleeding there. <laughs> In the Ally's lifetime, there have been a number of battery mods that have kind of popped up here and there, and some people even describing Asus like laptop batteries and sticking them on the back and then just 3D printing protruding covers to like contain the new bulge of battery or something. But probably the most guided and official feeling solution has been the one from JSAW, and I think that's how you say it, but forgive me if it's not. But their kit lets you go from the 40 watt hour battery to a 65 watt hour battery, which is a massive bump, without making the Ally feel too much bulkier and it also comes with a custom backplate to properly size the new battery in there and for the heck of it they throw in like a heat sink and grips and covers for the magical asus external gpu port you're probably never going to use and big shout out to jsaw they were kind enough to actually send over their kit that i've now installed on the RG Ally to help make the battery portion of the Xboxification of our Ally complete. So thank you very much, JSAW. We really appreciate it. The install process for the battery mod was actually pretty chill, especially compared to installing that dang mod chip in the Switch Lite. But pretty much I followed along with their nice instruction video, popped off the back, moved some hardware from the old back plate to the new back plate, popped out the old battery, popped in the new battery, and buttoned things back up. I'm of course glossing over a few details, but basically if you're comfortable taking the shell off of an electronic to do anything in there and you're not afraid by those little clamps on the ribbon cables, then you should be totally fine with this battery upgrade. Funny enough, probably the most difficult part of the battery upgrade was not the battery upgrade itself, but it was that I finally had to face the sins of the guy who owned my ally previous to me, because I bought this second hand, and evidently he said, nah, I don't want to pay for a higher capacity 2230 M.2, the little smaller one it's supposed to go in there. I'm going to buy a cheaper 2280 size, but apparently he looked up something online and he ended up moving one of the antennas over, shaving enough of the case to like barely kind of shim the 2280 into the socket, but like not straight on, like a, a nice little angle. And uh, he told me this when I bought it and I was like, oh, okay. But then I opened it up after I bought it and I was like, oh my gosh, that's just terrifying. And so as you can see, I didn't actually address the issue. I did put a little thermal strip on it as a sort of 
visual prayer over that SSD that it would continue to be fine. But it's been rocking three years with no issues, so I just haven't touched it. But now it was finally time to address it, especially because that SSD had to get out of the way for the new battery mod. And so I finally bought on AliExpress the 2230 to 2280 adapter, which gives me a right angle option instead of having it go straight down. It is clearly stated on the product page for the JSAW battery upgrade kit that the heatsink they include will not support that adapter because there's just too much going on, which is totally fair because you want things to be flush on each other if you're going to be adding a heatsink. And so I figured it was just kind of an extra thermal addition that came with the kit that I didn't really need. And so I just didn't install the heatsink. The one unfortunate thing is that the M.2 is still going to be a little bit raised up, a little bumped up because of the battery cables. I tried my best to flatten them down, but unfortunately there's still like a, a little bit of a rise there. And on top of all that, the M.2 screw had been lost to time and I couldn't really even secure it down if I wanted to because of the bulge of the battery cables. So long story short, we went from an angle like this to an angle like this and it's in the socket, at least all the pins are fully pushed in now, and it's out of the way of the battery, and thankfully when I booted up the Ally, it windows showed up just fine, so the SSD is still happy in there, he's at a slightly different angle, but I think it's at least a little more legit, so please don't roast me too hard in the comments on that, I know that I should just get a 2230 for this thing and call it a day, but uh, you know, it wouldn't be the Colter Peterson channel if it wasn't a little bit janky somewhere along the way, right? I literally just installed that battery mod last night, so I haven't had a chance to do a proper battery drain test, but I'll ask Mr. Editor to display those results on screen now, so you can see what the final results are. But to recap, I was getting one hour on performance mode playing Arkham Knight. Then I switched to Xbox full screen experience and I'm getting like an hour and 10 minutes, 100% down to zero performance mode. And with the battery upgrade, I predict that I'll be pushing more like an hour 55, maybe two hours. I don't want to be like too generous with that estimate, but I guess what's currently on the screen will tell you how good of a gambler I am or not. Now the final step of our Xbox Ally conversion project is ergonomics. Now some people have been saying that the new grips on the Xbox ROG Ally and the X variant are a little like wonky, you know, people that have tried it out in person. Personally, I'm quite excited for them as I think they've balanced the feel of an Xbox controller but condensed it down a little bit so that it's not gonna be massive in my bag because I haven't held a PS portal, but that thing looks like pretty freaking wide with a full like DualShock style grip flare going on there. Especially given there's a reason I choose the ROG Ally series over the Legion Go series because I'm just not into really heavy, dense handhelds, no matter what specs and fancy mouse tricks you pack in there. Now you may be thinking, hey, those grips are pretty structural to the new Xbox Allies. How are you gonna reshape the shell of our Allies to get the grips on there? And thankfully we don't have to, or even brush up on our Shaper 3D skills because peeps like Metronome12345, cool username, on Thingiverse have shared 3D models like this to change the ergonomics to your liking, which is super cool. I chose this particular model because it seemed to mimic the Xbox grip style the most, and I liked its snap-on design. So I sent these on over to my Bamboo Labs A1 printer, not a sponsor, but hey, if you're watching, Hit me up. I set the strength to 20% infill gyroid style, which I don't know, seems a little more strengthy to me. People who are really good at 3D printing can let me know in the comments what I should have printed it with. But just about four hours later, these bad boys were ready to go. I could definitely clean up the edges of this print a little bit with maybe some sandpaper, but anybody got time for that. Clipping these guys onto the Ally, it was delightful to confirm that they still work even with the modified back plate. And they do actually fit quite nice in the hand. Like obviously it's a different weight and balance. Like, you know, you're shifting from here to back here, but that's kind of the whole point of 3D printing custom grips is so that you can change up the ergonomics of the Ally. And yeah, it sits rather nice in the palms and yeah, I can get all to my face buttons and everything. If you've struggled with your ROG Ally ergonomics in the past, there are a number of models I saw on Bamboo Labs or Thingiverse. And so I'd say feel free to print one out and see if you like it. It's only the cost of filament and filament's cheap. Right? So I don't, I don't know if you'd want this particular model as the creator himself said these are a work in progress and he admitted it's not the best that they like block some of the vents and at high temps that might be problematic, but hey, I try to avoid turbo mode like the plague. So probably not a problem for me, but also probably not the best. So results may vary. And that my friends is how I converted my 2022 original ROG Ally into a much shinier Xbox Ally style handheld. And I think this has definitely helped curb my enthusiasm until <clears throat> my uh, Xbox ROG Ally X pre-order arrives in a couple of weeks. Yes, I did pre-order the big fat new one, 
partly because I would personally enjoy the upgrade, but a decent part because I think there's a number of cool things we can do on the channel with it. Maybe we'll install SteamOS on it. Maybe we'll design a cool dock for it. So yeah, that's gonna be a wild time and I have a number of video ideas for it. So definitely let me know in the comments what you wanna see out of the Xbox ROG Ally X. And make sure you hit subscribe to catch all the coverage because yeah, there's gonna be a lot going on. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this video, check out when I installed official SteamOS on this video, which turned out pretty cool.